Now, and once again, we are back. We are covering another region. This time it is going to be the 4A Gila. As always, you got me, Chris, and that is also in the middle, Mr. Rodney Cox from Game Time RC and sure. Daniel on the far end from Varsity Breakdown. Uh, what we do here is we look at Max Prep's rankings from last at the end of last year's uh, season, kind of compare whether we think that Max Prep is going to kind of hit this one on, on the head, kind of be on or off. And that's kind of the angle that we kind of look at this thing. Like what we're going to do here, we're going to go over the 4A Gila and just kind of tell you where they ended up last season and go from there. So go ahead, Daniel, drop on it. All right, we're going to start things off with Amphi, who finished seven and three last year, five and one in the region. Next up is Choya. They finished four and six and two and four in the region. Douglas finished six and four, five and one in the region. And Empire looks exactly the same. They also finished six and four and five and one in the region. Rincon University finished two and eight, zero oh and six in the region. Rio Rico finished up four and six and three and three in the region. And last but not least, we have Saborita, who finished two and eight and one and five in the region. And if you take a look at it, we had a three way tie uh, for uh, the region uh, as Amphi, Douglas, and Empire. They all finished five and one, where ultimately Amphi was your region champions. And we'll kind of discuss, uh, you know, things as to possibly how things will shape out this year. Could it be the same? We'll take a look at it. Also, uh, none of the teams made it in the playoffs. And just going over the Max Preps rankings, uh, Amphi came in at 117th is where we'll be starting this next season. Troy is at 172. Uh, Douglas is at 136. Empire is at 145. Rincon is at 194. Rio Rico is at 158. And Salarita is at 186, and that's out of 220-some-odd teams throughout the state. So we're going to jump in on this, and, and always we kind of see what we can do, whether we, we agree and, and disagree with each other. Um, I think this region, as we'll go over and we'll see, there's a lot of um, a lot of polar opposites. A lot. It's going to be real hard to kind of argue with certain things that happened last year. Um, we'll, we'll see where we come up, where can they pick up some wins, um, and so on throughout this whole thing. Um, jumping right into it, we were going to have, who was going to do this one starting off? Well, let's go. Let me jump right into it with Amphi, who's ranked like what you guys said, 117. Um, their first game is a home game, uh, Maryville, who's ranked 184. Um, and then the next week they are at Independence, which is out here in Phoenix, who's ranked 112. And then they have a home game uh, against Florin Wells, who's ranked 137. And then they're at Canyon Del Oro, who's ranked uh, 17th. Um, and then their next game is going to be a home game against Choya, who's 172. And then they're at Douglas, who's 136. And then they have a home game. Oh, there we go. You have a home game with Empire, um, who's 145 at uh, Recon, which is 194. Home game with Rio Rico, who's 158. And then they're at uh, Sarita, Sarita, I said Sarita, Sarita, who's ranked uh, 186. And then they have a bye week. Um, again, we have Max Preps, who has them going eight and two, and which is crazy. We're kind of having them going seven and three. Um, you know what, Chris? Or yeah, actually, Daniel, talk to me a little bit. Seven and three, uh, wins, loss, talk to me. Uh, so for me, uh, I got them. Uh, going seven and three with losses, uh, two independents to right. Canyon del Oro. And I think where we differ, um, where I differ from uh, the two, you two, is that I have them losing to Douglas, where you two have them losing to Empire. So I think that if you go back and look at that Douglas game, Amphi kind of took it to them, won 47 to 14. But coming into this year, I'm kind of looking at the returning players uh, for uh, specifically a team like Douglas, you know, when you kind of take a look at uh, Amphi, they're, you know, they do have uh, a lot coming back on the offensive end. Uh, Imanol uh, Silva uh, will be returning at quarterback as well as uh, Malik Morrow and Jacob Espinoza, their number one and number two running backs will be returning. So that's uh, where I see it's good. I don't know if these stats are, all inputted correctly uh, for Amphi, 
But I think with what Douglas has coming back, I'm going to go in favor of Douglas this year to uh, knock off uh, Amphire. But what about you guys? You got them losing to Empire. Where, where do you guys see things going for that game? Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and jump in on it. Um, from what I'm seeing here, one of my big things that I ran into was I saw where the scores were that were kind of close. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like I had mentioned earlier in the interest, uh, the introduction segment, is that these scores are so bipolar. It's like either they were in the game or way out of the game. Mm -hmm. um, the games that I felt that they might actually have some kind of leverage and be able to pick up wins or losses. So these are the crucial ones, I think, in the schedule is the Flowing Wells game as well as the Empire game. If they can't get the wins on there, I think the rest of the schedule kind of looks the same as it did last year. And you're going to kind of hear that theme from me coming throughout this whole set of this whole show is that the scores, like as for example, like they're, they're 30, like for instance, Choya, 34 to 3 last year, uh, 0 to 41 at CDO. And the only ones where you really get into any kind of like, oh, well, this could be an interesting game. And it's exciting always for Amphi to play Flowing Wells because they're old school rivals. It's the Prince Avenue um, mm -hmm. the rivals. Uh, and that score was actually 27 to 21. So this is a game that they have to kind of pick up as well as the Empire game was at 20 to 27. Those were the only ones that were really kind of in that ball game. Other than that, it's just kind of like dominated. So that's why I'm going with... The, you know, my picks, which which pretty much as I got to pull it back up to look at that one is <laughs> I'm going to go with the loss to to Empire and I'll go with the win over Flowing Wells. And you know what? I'll add to that. Here we go. I'm Listen, I just got word from somebody from Amphi that they're going to beat Independence. OK, uh, which I know last year they lost 31 to 17. But again, listen, I get the news already. Like, boom, to the phone. Bow. So um, I can see them going more, let's say, eight and two, like what Max Preps has them going, then seven and three. So listen, newsflash, M5 is going to beat Independence. I said it first on August 13th. Holla at your boy. Ooh. I Bold said it. prediction there. Yeah, okay. holla at your boy. Okay. okay. I yeah. mean, that's the route he's going. That's the route he's going, ladies and gentlemen. Um, next one up here, we have... Choya. Choya's going to be the next one. Daniel, do you want to go ahead and grab that one for me? I got you. Uh, Choya is one ranked 172. Uh, they're going to open up on the road for a Thursday night matchup at Copper Canyon, who is 192. Then they'll have uh, Maryvale at home, who's 184. At Pueblo, who is 126. Home against uh, Sawara with an H, who's 115. On the road at Amphi, who's 117. Uh, back to back home games against Rincon, who is 194, and Douglas, who is 136. And then finish up back to back road games at Sawarita, who's 186, and at Empire, who is 145. Mm -hmm. And then they'll have their bye week and finish uh, their uh, last game at home against Rio Rico, who is 158. And Max Preps has them going four and six this year. Chris, you and I are in agreement with that, while Rodney, you have them going three and seven. Yeah, you know what? I'll jump into it. And I know we differ from the uh, from the Copper Canyon, right, game, right, where I have them losing, you guys have them winning. I know last year, um, you know, I know last year that they did beat Copper Canyon. Again, it was a close game. It was seven to zero. So just to kind of throw a curveball, you know, again, I could just see that, you know, Choya losing that. Um, especially with what they have coming back, you know, like they're they're losing their quarterback. I believe the only people that they have coming back is their number one rusher, um, Francisco uh, Mendeville, and then they have their uh, the third ranked wide receiver, and then their leading tackler. But everybody else is gone, you know. So again, you know, I'm just throwing like a little, you know, curveball to say that hey, Choya, um, you know, can take that L right there, which you know. Potentially could happen with a close game with seven to zero last year. I think what you're going to have to do is this: is that the two games once again, just like I was talking on the last one, uh, mm -hmm. these are these are far separated kind of games. The closest ones was Copper Canyon as well as Rio Rico. Um, they got to come away with those two wins uh, to kind of push it off. Now I have them flip um, 
pretty much a 50 50 on these ones i got them winning over copper canyon but i do have them losing the rio rico um <laughs> One thing I will say is this is I have seen Choi out there and they're doing stuff. I've been to their seven on sevens. I've seen the coach doing some stuff as well. So there, there's definitely a, a buy-in right now that I kind of like over at Choya. Um, okay. This is the first year with the new coach coming in after um, uh, Coach Virgil's kind of gone over to uh, Saguaro at this point in time. So I'm, I'm interested to see how the chemistry is. Uh, it seems to be doing stuff. They're, they're, they're buying in. So it's a plus there, kind of contradicting who's coming back from what you're saying, Rodney. Um, I kind of like the energy that's coming from this team. I'll go with the four and six. I mean, they're probably going to wish that we kind of said more. But uh, right now, I'm kind of like a prove it to me kind of thing, prove it to earn it from me. Uh, so I'll go with the four and six and, and agree with Max Peps. Mm. Yeah, and I'm right there with you, Chris. Uh, I think the games against Maryville, Rincon, and Sawarita have to be the games that they take. If you look back at that game against Copper Canyon, it was only a 7-0 to zero victory. So I can see, Rodney, where you're coming from there. That can be another toss-up game as well, uh, especially with uh, Copper Canyon now having a new coach as well in uh, Coach Shanks, who was uh, down there in uh, Coolidge. Uh, so definitely an interesting uh make out for uh choya especially uh having a new coach a new program but like you said chris i do like that they're out there uh doing things not very many teams we can say who come in these type of regions are out there trying to improve their rosters so just to have them out in the seven on sevens and working on things over the summer i think is going to be a, a big factor as to why they can go in a four and six but outside of that i don't really see another game where they could possibly be uh, able to pick up another victory. Maybe at the end of the season against Rio Rico could be another uh, steal for them if they come in prepared, especially having the bye week, uh, the prior week. So we're, we're going to see. I'm going to have them at the four and six, uh, but it, it it easily could be a three and seven where Rodney's at or maybe even a five and five if they right. are able to snag that game against Rio Rico. Agree with you completely, man. And that's going to go ahead and push us into the next one, which is going to be Douglas. Uh, this, is, this is another team that was locked up to pretty much almost win the region last uh, last season. So I'll go ahead and let Rodney run down through Douglas. Absolutely. So Doug, Douglas comes in at 136. Um, the first game is a home game against ALA Ironwood, who's ranked 104. Um, and then the, their next two games are going to be at Bisbee, who's ranked 156. And then at Saguaro with an H, <laughs> who's ranked 115. And then their next, what, three games are going to be home games, uh, which is going to be Ironwood Ridge, who's ranked 77, Empire, who's ranked 145, and then Amphire, who's ranked 117. Um, then their next two games before their bye week are going to be away games, which is at Choya, which, uh, who's at 172, and then at Rio Rico, who's at 158. After their bye week, they have a home game against Recon, um, who's ranked 194, and then at um, Sarawita, who is ranked 186. Uh, Max Preps has them going six and four, and ooh, I have them going five and five. And Chris, I know you have them going six and four, and then Daniel, okay, seven and three. So um, yeah, talk to us a little bit about that seven and three record. That's that's bold. Oh, yeah. I think uh, for Douglas, uh, you know, I do like uh, the talent that uh, they have coming back. You know, just a couple of years ago, I was down seeing them against uh, Casa Grande. And, you know, it was like, you know, where was Douglas going to go from there? You know, they were definitely in a down slump. And I think for them to finish five and one in the region and still have a lot of their offense coming back, you have even, um, excuse me, uh, Ivan uh, uh, Higuera. I believe is how you pronounce the last name. Uh, he'll be returning. Uh, he was also their leading rusher, you know, rushed for over a thousand yards. And then you have uh, Jason uh, Hutado, uh, who will be uh, their number two running back. Then you have your top two tacklers in Andres Hoyos and uh, uh, Jason as well. Uh, they're going to both be on the defensive side. So uh, just like kind of like Amphi, I, I, I do like what they have coming back. But at the same time, I think where I differ from Chris, I have them picking up that victory against Amphi, and the only loss is really coming to Saguaro, Ironwood Ridge, and ALA Ironwood, 
who are, you know, turning into some elite teams out there in their respective uh, divisions. So outside of that, I think this is a region that is up for grabs. And I think Douglas is right in the mix of things uh, yet again this year. I agree with you. I agree with you completely. I think um, Douglas is one of those teams. This is going to be, I think, the same thing pretty much last last year was with this region where you kind of cut them to the very end with these last three teams kind of amongst each other, kind of beating each other up, meaning Amphi, Douglas, and and Empire. Um, once again, I think this the situations here for me, or at least the 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 warning zones for the for this schedule. Empire, you got to kind of watch that game. It can go kind of either way, as well as Bisbee. Uh, Bisbee and, and Douglas, one of the oldest rivalries that goes back in the history of football, pretty much, uh, when it comes to history, um, high school. These two duke it out they, all the way to the last end. Um, I think it was barely like a, a like a Douglas point. barely pulled off at one point. Yeah. yeah, so it was real close last year. Um and that, that game means the world to those guys down there. So mm -hmm. I think where you got to kind of watch is, is the Bisbee game or the Empire game. But the wins that they, they should get pretty simple uh, should be the Sabarita, the Rincon, Rio Rico, and also Choya. Watch Rio Rico there a little bit if they want to. Um, but, yeah, and Daniel, like you're saying, could the Amphi game be an interesting one? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why I'm going to kind of agree with Max Preps on this one. Uh, which kind of tends to be my trend on this this region right now. Uh, not much shaking the the bed. This is what it is. Um, go back and look at the records from last year. Right, right. And again, like where I come in at with with the five and five record, kind of like you, uh, Chris, with the whole Bisbee game. Again, it was a close game. I think it was like 39-38 with Douglas winning. Uh, this year, I'm going with the home team um, coming back and actually beating. Uh, beating Douglas. So that's why I have the loss going there again. Just like you said, one of the oldest rivalry um, game out there. And then I have the Amphi. I have Douglas losing to Amphi, which last year, um, you know, they lost 47 to 14. Um, so again, I'm just looking at maybe trends, but also kind of throwing a curveball because again, I don't want to be the same pick as you guys. Um, but again, I mean, everything else is pretty much the same um when i'm looking at the schedule and things like that so you know they can go what five and five or seven and three and be at the at the top of their region just like last year and um you know we shall see and then we'll go ahead and move right over into the other one that the third team that tied <laughs> for for the same record in region last year uh empire and we're gonna have who's taking this one I'll take this one. Uh, so Empire is ranked 145. They're going to open up at home against Sierra Linda, who is ranked 141. Then back-to-back -back road games at La Jolla, who is 157, and at Ironwood Ridge, who is 77. They'll be at home against Pueblo, who is 126. On the road against Douglas – or, sorry, Pueblo was 126, and on the road at Douglas, who's 136. Home against uh, Sawadita, who is 186. On the road against Amphi, who is 117. Then after the bye, they're home against uh, Choya, who is 172. At Rio Rico, who is 158. And finish up at home against Rincon, who is 194. Uh, Max Preps has them finishing 5-5, five and five, while we actually have them improved by a game or two. I have them going 6-4. and four, And Chris and Rodney, you have them going 7-3. and three. So who wants to talk about that one first? <laughs> Here we go. Take it if you want it. You know um, what? Go take it. Go go take it. I'll, I'll give you a little a little uh, a little assist. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the layup, Poppy. Uh, <laughs> 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 Scotty Pippen up here. Um, no, the, the thing that I'm going to say this about the Empire schedule here, this is the one that has the most controversy for me throughout all this whole region. It has the most close games throughout their season. I can see why Max Prep is saying five and five, and I can see why, and, and I can battle why I'm saying seven and three. You had Sierra, Sierra Linda. They continuously to play Sierra Linda hard. Um, mm -hmm. uh, La Jolla Community, uh, that's, that's going to be a tough game there, too. Douglas showed a lot of it with Amphi as well as Rio Rico even popping in there. It's those games that they played real close last season that makes it really kind of difficult for me to say, okay, cool, this is this is like 
they're going to take the region or whatnot because this is once again the more controversial uh schedule i feel um i do have the losses coming to them by douglas pueblo ironwood ridge which is my in my three out of the seven uh, the mm-hmm. seven and three schedule that we have. I just think Ironwood Ridge is in Pueblo as well as uh, it, Douglas or Douglas might be the one to kind of battle with it, but Ironwood Ridge and, and Pueblo should be a pretty dominant, you know, over on the wins there. Huh? Right. Yeah. Right. And just to kind of piggyback off of you, Chris, because again, we have the same record. Um, I can see them potentially, you know, and again, maybe sneaking out a win um, at Douglas, you know what I mean? To make it almost like a, eight and two, you know what I mean? I mean, everything goes, I mean, it's, it's kind of, listen, the, the games that they played, just like what you said, were so close just from last year, right? Just with, you know, the Sierra Linda 13 to seven that they lost. I know that they beat La Jolla 20 to 14. Um, you know what I mean? So, I mean, even like Amphi, I mean, they beat them, but it was 27 to 20, you know? So like they're in these games and again, with a flip of a coin or, you know, a, a, a bad play or a misplay here and there, it can, that win can be a loss or that loss could be a win. So, it, it, listen, this was tough picking this this schedule. So we got them going seven and three. Daniel, you have them going six and four. So uh, talk to us. Uh, so I think we're unanimous on the uh, three losses, which were mm-hmm. Ironwood Ridge, uh, Pueblo, and then uh, Douglas. Uh, you know, I can see uh, the Douglas game depending on how it goes. May- maybe a toss up there. Uh, mm-hmm. But the reason I have them uh, with one loss uh, uh, less than you, or I should say more than you guys, uh, is because when you look at this uh, roster breakdown and who they have returning, mm-hmm. it's going to be very dependent on their uh, quarterback and running backs. You have uh, Bryson Duncan, uh, who's going to be returning under center. And then you have. Uh, Ningok, oh uh, man, that's gonna be a hard name to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm know where we're, we're, yes, we're, we're, we're trying to say it. We're trying to right. say it. Non- Nonkra, maybe is uh, his name, but uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna butcher that. But they have their number yeah, one and number two running backs. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not gonna even go any further. Uh, but their number one and number two uh, running backs are coming back. Um, mm-hmm. But that's pretty much it. You know, so I think when you look at Empire, could it be a team where a game like Rio Rico, they could possibly lose to, you know, uh, they that game finished 21 to 14. So uh, as far as the, the unanimous three, uh, as well as including the Amphi game, I think Empire is going to be around that five and five, six and four record just because of the amount of firepower that they have returning. It's not really there. So uh, I think that this might come down to a race between Douglas and Amphi at the end of it. And But you know what? I think as far as Empire goes, it's going to be one of those ones that uh, we always like to say, hey, prove me wrong because they were in the, a mix of things. I just think they lost a little bit too much uh, this past year to make a run at it yet again with Douglas and Amphi. The one thing I'll add on to you as yeah. well is um, I know George Kelly's over there. Um, he always tends to pull something out make something happen one thing that empire is also notoriously kind of known for is their defense they tend to be a pretty strong defensive team they've had some solid linebackers in the past years obviously um a couple that we know lambert lambert absolutely Mm -hmm. they've Mm -hmm. they've had some solid kids in there so really kind of watch the defensive side to kind of help win some of these games um but yeah definitely i mean they're going to be one of the teams to watch in this region um, the next thing that we have coming up is Recon. Uh, Rodney, go ahead and jump Recon, on. That. Yes, so we have Recon coming in at one ninety four. Um, their first two games are going to be home games, um, which is against Washington, who's ranked one seventy eight, and Palo Verde, who's ranked two hundred one. Um, their first away game is going to be at Stafford, who's ranked eighty six. They have a nice bye week early uh, in the season. Um, after the bye week, though, they will have a home game um, at Rio Rico. They'll be uh, where we go. Who's actually ranked 158? Then they'll be at Choya, who's 172, at Vista Grande, who is ranked uh, 85, and then their next two games are going to be home games uh, against Amphi, and then uh, Saroita, um, who Amphi is ranked 117, Saroita is ranked 186, and then they end their regular season um, away 
which is at Douglas, who's 136, and then at Empire, um, who's ranked 145. Um, again, Max Preps, Max Preps have them going one and nine. While, you know, kind of the same for us, you know, as far as Daniel has them going one and nine, myself and Chris has them going two and eight. Um, it's going to be a tough year, tough year for them, um, you know, so who wants to, who, who wants to go after this first? Uh, I can, go ahead, Daniel. No, I, I, I could take it. Uh, you know, the lone game I have them uh, winning, it would be the Palo Verde game. You know, I have uh, Washington uh, possibly uh, picking up a win uh, against them this year. That game finished 24 to 18. And, you know, um, I just as, as once you kind of start going down the schedule, I know uh, Safford lost uh, quite a bit of players, but at the same time, they're a, a team that always comes back. And then Outside of their region opponents, I mean, Vista Grande, we know are our heavy favorites in the 4A uh, Desert Sky this year. But uh, it, it, like uh, Rodney, we've been saying for the past couple of years, it's kind of uh, with Rincon coming down uh, to uh, the 4A um, division, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully it's something that they can start rebuilding. They have no nothing to, uh, but improvements, you know, their way. I just think the hardest thing to kind of look at is they're losing their number one and two uh, running backs this year. They do have their quarterback, Thomas Montgomery, coming back this year. But one of the biggest questions is there's no stats on the defensive side. So not really sure where that is kind of uh, standing for uh, them. And if you look at it outside of their first two games against Washington and uh, Palo Verde, they only scored uh, more than two touchdowns, I want to say three times last year uh you know two touchdowns or more so it's definitely gonna uh be a team that if they don't have a, a great uh defensive presence this year they're gonna definitely have to rely a lot on uh thomas montgomery and it's gonna be tough to do it especially here in the 4a gila what's well, what's crazy for me when it comes to rincon is rincon's one of the largest schools in southern arizona actually they're the second only behind tucson high people don't tend to know that there's a lot of kids that attend this school so mm -hmm. would it take much for this to flip over a program? No, if they could get people to buy in. The thing mm -hmm. is, is that's difficult for it, is like we've mentioned. So me and Rodney both are agreeing on the on the two and eight record. That's Washington was the only game that was kind of close for them that, that you know, could go one way or the other. Um, that Palo Verde game, eh, you kind of got to watch Palo Verde. They're building. They're getting mm -hmm. better. So could it even be worse than two and eight? It could be. But I think the main focus for Rincon University is is you got to kind of start narrowing in some of these scores. Like, for instance, you had mentioned, like, they only scored a couple times that was actually um, – hold on real quick. We only scored a couple times that was actually um, close. Like, you got, you got scores like 7 to 50. You got – 14 yeah. to 54, 0 to 39, 0 to 7, uh, 37. You, you got these scores. They have to – I think the focus for rank on this season is narrow those scores in and, and be potential. It could go this way and that way maybe in the future year and also mm -hmm. draw kids from their student body to kind of join the program. That's where I'm at. Yeah, listen, that's pretty much it too. It's kind of just, you know, just start building a foundation – you know what I mean? Just because, again, it's 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 been tough for them. I mean, you know, like even last year. Um, so, yeah, just prove us wrong. Come out there and just battle, you know, week in and week out. Um, and then just go from there. So that's pretty much it as far as, you know, my take on um, Recon University and, you know, what we see as far as their, their season th uh, this year. All right. Next one up, we got Rio Rico. Who's taking this one? I'll take this one. Uh, so Rio Rico is coming in ranked 158. They're going to open up at Desert Sunrise, who is 182. Then a Thursday night home game against Glendale, who's 94, as well as a home game against Nogales, who is 187. Then back-to-back -back road games, they'll play uh, be at Florence on a Thursday night, who's ranked 89. And then at Rincon, who is 194. After the bye week, uh, they're going to be uh, home twice in a row against Sawadita, who's 186, and Douglas, who is 136. Then at Amphi, who is 117, home against Empire, who is 145, 
And finally, wrap up at Choya, who is 172. Max Preps has him finishing five and five on the year. And we are in agreement with that, <laughs> with all three of us saying they're going to uh, finish five and five. Anybody right. want to start off uh, as to why? I'll you go know, ahead. I mean, oh, go, go ahead, Chris. Go yeah, ahead, I'll I'll do it, man. I don't mind. I'm not scared. Um, so Rio Rico, the thing that I, I think that that Rio Rico really needs to focus on is once again, this is another one of those schedules where it is bipolar. You are either you dominantly won the game, you dominantly lost the game, and what's in the middle. So what was in the middle is Desert Sunrise. That was a, a closer game, Empire, as well as Choya. Those are the three games that hey, look. We really got to kind of win if we want to move on to those things. Now, granted, where I have is I got to win over Desert uh, Sunrise. I got to win over Choya. I do have them losing the Empire. Those are uh, three of my um, uh, and there's uh, where's my losses here? I apologize. So I have them losing to Glendale. I have them losing to Florence. I have them losing to Douglas, Amphi, and Empire. Which that's the three gauntlet that they have to run through. If they can win something out of those three games uh, in the region that they aren't supposed to be in, bonus. They could disrupt some stuff. But honestly, when I looked at Rio Rico and what's going on, they got a new coaching staff down there. We're not sure what's going to happen there. But you have, once again, a lot of that teeter-totter scoring where it's like zero to this or or we did this over to zero, you know. So those become my concerns, my little. So watch the games like I had mentioned, Desert Sunrise, Empire, and Toy. Those are my three games where things could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, again, I agree with you as far as the Choya, the Empire, um, and then the Desert Sunrise. Because I mean, again, even last year, you know, like they lost the Empire twenty-one to fourteen. Like what you said, Choya twenty-eight to to twenty-one. So again, I'm agreeing with you. Um, the good thing about them is, you know, they do have some guys coming back on the defensive side, uh, which again can probably help them kind of keep games close, you know, from, you know, uh, is it Yahel Clark to uh, Mr. Bonilla to Emmanuel uh, Verdugo? You know, obviously on the offensive side, you know, they're losing their their quarterback, their running back. Um, and then the only thing that they have coming back on offense is going to be their number one receiver um, and Kenneth um, Avilas, and then their number three receiver, um, who is Jared Bravo. So it's kind of interesting to see, you know, I mean, how – Rio Rico's going to do, you know what I mean? Again, we have them going five and five. So prove us wrong. Let's go at the end of the day. What's your opinion there, Daniel? Uh, no, I'm in 100% agreement with you guys. I think if you're going to circle some games, that might be some surprises here. Uh, look out for Desert Sunrise. Uh, they're going to be a team that uh, they only had their first varsity season last year. So a team that has everybody coming back, uh, they're looking to improve on what they did last year's and they play in that 4A Desert Sky, so they play against some good competition there. Um, I'm also going to circle that game against Sawarita. You know, they uh, beat them decisively 38-8, to eight, but you know what? We talk about uh, Coach uh, Jake Allen over there. You know, I'm interested to see uh, how much they're going to improve. And then, of course, I had them as a possible close matchup with Empire, only losing by seven. But I think, uh, you know, you said it best, Rodney, a lot gone on that offensive end. Uh, what is it going to look like? You know, are they going to be able to put up the points that they did last year? We're going to have to wait and see, especially with the new coaching staff. Hopefully it's uh, uh, some kids there that they can just plug and play and maybe not even skip a beat. Uh, but I think instead of having to play Vista Grande, your very first game, you open up against a fair matchup with Desert Sunrise. It could gain some momentum for them if they're able to pick up that victory. Well, and I think Absolutely. another another thing, too, is that this is another program that also gets out and tries to go to these seven-on-sevens. They go out mm -hmm. and they're actually involved. So they could be meshing up their chemistry and coming in a little bit strong. So, I mean, we could be sleeping on them a little bit, um, but at the same time, it's just hard to kind of go against like like scores, like I'm saying, like one's 47-0 or something like that, and the next one's, you know, mm -hmm. something else. So so once again, I think the focus needs to be narrowing those gaps down. Mm -hmm. You know, that's got to be one of your main focuses this year and try to start gaining ground on that. But the last one that we're going to cover up here, and actually you were just talking about, Mr. Jake Allen, is going to be Sabarita. 
So I'll go ahead and let Rodney since he was. Oh, yeah. Today. So Mr. Jake Allen and his uh, Sawarita is uh, coming in at 186. Um, their first game is going to be a home game uh, against Alhambra, who's ranked 195. And then their next two games are going to be away um, at Deer Valley, who's ranked 150, and at Merritt Copa, who's ranked 130. And then their next game before the bye is going to be a home game against Florin Wells, um, who's ranked 137. Um, after their home game, their next two games are going to be away at Empire, who's ranked 145, and at Rio Rico, who's ranked 158. Um, and then their next game is going to be a home game uh, against Choya, who's ranked 172. Then their next game is going to be at Recon University, who's ranked 194. And then they get to wrap up their season um, with home games, which is Amphi, ranked 117, and Douglas, who's ranked uh, 136. Again, Max Preps has them going 2-8. and eight, And, oh, my goodness, we are actually agreeing today um, two and eight with all of us, um, across the board. So, uh, I'm pretty sure Chris wants to talk first because he's on the road today. <laughs> Shoot wow. it, Chris. Go ahead. Shoot Chris. <laughs> um, I think Sabarita has just been plagued ever since 2020, um, yeah. with the COVID season. They were actually striving really well. Since then, they've actually just struggled. Um, mm -hmm. It's getting back on track. The talents are out there out in, Sal in the Sabarita community. Um, I think a lot of the kids have just gone over to Walden Grove in recent years. Um, so it's really going to be interesting to see what happens. Once again, this is a region that any of these programs could change overnight. All it's going to take is a lot of buy-in for kids to come out and actually support it. I think Sawarita as a community has that kind of buy-in where they could actually like turn on a dime and start doing really well if the kids just kind of go, hey, you know what, let's make something happen here. They have the depth out there to grab kids. Um, I think the programs here that I would watch is make sure you're watching the Alhambra game, which is one of the wins that we have, but it was mm -hmm. really close. That could go either way. Um, obviously, they got Rincon. If they could pick up something like a Choya game would be nice, or even a, a, a Flowing Wells or playing Flowing Wells this year. Those could be some of the games that I could see that will be interesting. I do have them like, like you guys do at 2-8. and eight. But this could actually be one of those programs that actually could upset a lot of teams if they get the buy-in and then they're all, well, that's it. Truth, truth is buying in. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'll definitely, that's exactly where I was going to start off my talking point. So you already did that for me, Chris. They, okay. This is the team that is my sleeper to kind of mess up some stuff in this region. When you take a look at this roster, you know, they have the quarterback, Raul uh, Vez, uh coming back, Alden Fox and Williams uh, Thwaites, uh, number one, number two running backs, and then all three uh, receivers returning uh, for, uh, you know, their quarterbacks. So those are big deals. And uh, being able to watch Coach Jake Allen and what he was able to do uh, at Pueblo, uh, one of the things I saw, especially at that game against Vista Grande that we were out there uh, watching, is he had those uh, players bought in, you know, and uh, especially going up against a team like Vista Grande, uh, it was a battle, you know, and one of the things I saw is his players didn't quit. And so I think if he can incorporate this into uh, the Mustangs uh, culture, you're going to definitely see some improvements this year uh, for uh, Sawarita. Two and eight, I think, is the lowest that they'll go. But like you said, Chris, the games against Choya, maybe even a Rio Rico, could they possibly shock one of these other top three teams that we have? It's possible. It all depends on if the kids are going to buy into what uh, Coach Allen is doing and what he's going to bring to this program. But at the lowest, I'm going two and eight, and sky's the limit after that. What are you thinking, Ronnie? Boom, period. Drop the mic. Buy in. That's the word for Sado Ito. Sado Ito. It's all right, dude. We understand you're from Phoenix. <laughs> you got jokes today, bro? Don't start with me. Okay. Um, so, yeah. No, no. you know what? I got a question for you. Yeah. The Maricopa, because we got two Mustangs playing against each other. Right? And I yeah. I, I thought about that. Maricopa Mustangs and Maricopa Sado Ito Mustangs. Bud. Huh? You're thinking of the college. Oh, wait. In my, <laughs> in my head, I was like, wait. Are there, yeah, are you're there the Rams. Yes, I so. was like, are there two Mustangs playing against each other? Like, But never mind. Listen, at the end of the day, buy-in, that's the biggest thing. They have a great a great coaching staff with Jake Allen and his assistant coaches. Um, 
in the day. Got to see, you know, prove us wrong and see if we can get better than that two and eight and go from there. And just to go ahead and wrap up everything that we've been talking about, these this is the overlook on what we have. Um, so go ahead and check that out. In the meantime, what we'll do is we'll go over who we feel is actually going to take these regions. Um, I'll go ahead and start off. I, I think for me coming in, and I'm going to do what, what Daniel did last show. I'm going to start from the <laughs> bottom. Um, coming in seventh, I got uh, Rincon going 0-6. Uh, number five will be Choya at 2-4 and four in region play. Uh, number four is going to be Rio Rico at three and three region play. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to do the whole same thing from last year. Unless something really shakes up for me, I'm going to go with the same thing with the three. Um, I know this is like so cliche to do that. Um, but I think it's just interesting how they battle each other. So I'm going to go with the, the Amphi, Douglas and Empire all kind of tying up and beating each other up because that's just what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I had number uh, six. Did I say Sabadita? One in one in five. That's that's my number six seed. So you guys can go ahead. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, Daniel. All right. Uh, so uh, for me, I'll go. Uh, you know, bottom to top. There, I got uh, Rincon going zero and six, and then uh, Sabadita going one and five, Choya at two and four, Rio Rico at three and three. And then I have uh, Empire finishing four and two, and Amphi finishing five and one with Douglas sweeping of the region going six and zero. Oh. So, gonna be a, a tough uh, order uh, task uh, for uh, Douglas, but I'm a I'm a firm believer that they could possibly get it done this year. Okay, okay. Well, I'm on the same uh, wavelength, which is which is weird because we are never on the same wavelength. Uh, as far as me and Chris, <clears throat> so I'm gonna start from the top and just work my way to the bottom. So I have um Amphi, Douglas, and Empire going five and one, and then coming in at number four is going to be Rio Rico at three and three, and then the fifth is going to be Troya coming in at two and four, and then six um, is going to be the Mustangs uh, coming in at one and five, and then Recon University coming in at 0 and six. So, um, listen, at the end of the day. Listen, we're excited because football is here. We have like what a couple weeks, two weeks next week. We don't have one more of these to do, yeah. Yeah, we only have one more of these to do, and you guys don't get to see our beautiful face, psych. <laughs> um, so no, listen, I'm excited. Football is here. Um, listen, no more seven on sevens, no more, you know, shorts and a shirt. It's time to put on them helmets and them shoulder pads, and it's time to get going. A lot of cool Good. things I think with this region is that it's building these programs. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I think what you could see here is because they are towards the bottom of the, the division, you could see maybe some of these teams dropping down to 3A, but I think a lot of the times they kind of petition it because they don't want to do the travel thing. We've had this conversation mm -hmm. multiple times. Um, so that kind of hurts, but, but I think in all in all, this region's actually become kind of fun to watch, especially the three teams we've kind of been focused on throughout the whole conversation. Um, I mean, other than that, I mean, do you guys, I, I don't see any of these teams making it to the playoffs, regardless what they do. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate, but their strength of schedule is just down, just down. It's on the bottom of the, of the, the division. Um, anything, any shocking thing that you guys could see with this region? Sawarita. They're my sleeper, man. Hey, hey, you. you know what? So me and Chris <laughs> saw them um, at Mike Amounts during the springtime show. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like they got some, they, they got some, some good looking guys on on uh, on the O line. Right. You know, uh, they had a nice looking quarterback that was out there throwing a the ball. But again, that was with shorts and a shirt, right? Mm -hmm. I want to see what they do with helmets, shoulder pads, you know, things like that. So I mean, again, I mean. I could kind of, you know, side with you as far as, um, you know, Sawadita kind of coming in and kind of being that little, that dark horse to kind of change some things around. So, hey, we going to see. You know, Let's I'll, go. I'll, I'll throw in the Choya team. Okay. I, I think Ooh. Choya could be really interesting. I think, once again, I mean, you're talking about schools with large enrollment. If they just buy in and get okay. some of these athletes, and they have athletes. I mean, year after year, I mean uh, – 
Moses Nelson was a good kid that I used mm-hmm. to enjoy back a couple mm-hmm. years ago. Um, there, there's been a lot of kids and talent that's come out of uh, Toya. So don't mm-hmm. sleep on them, I don't think. Um, I think we're going to go with the picks that we did just because, hey, these are the logic ones to go with. But mm-hmm. I'd rather, once again, I think we all sit there off and say, I'd rather be wrong than right, you know, sometimes. Is that for for all of us? I think we always want to see programs strive and go in the right direction. Um, right. So you guys might hear us kind of sound like, "Oh, uh, they're going to go this and that," but we'd rather be wrong than right on those things. But we are picking off of of information that's provided to us. I mean, so so I think that's some of the things that we also want to strive. One thing I do want to kind of uh, tap up on here is my man Rodney Cox has been pushing his game time senior bowl. And guys, listen, that's coming. So listen, it's coming and it's about to be hot. And I'm not talking about hot because it's summer right now. It's gonna be hot. Uh, we got a couple of things that we're that we're adding different. Um, like the last show, um, it's gonna be at Ottawa University, January 11th. Um, so open registration is going to happen September 14th. Okay, so get ready because when it opens, we're only taking 80 kids, and right now we have about a hundred and 87 nominations so people are getting the the word is is out from you know outside of arizona and border states so yeah man listen the black squad is gonna win i'm gonna tell you that right now okay coaching again yeah listen i'm gonna be (laughs) coordinator for the black squad man listen that's the only time i can coach and get that you know that that coaching you know out of me you know what i mean so listen right now i'm saying it black squad is going to win add this to your story add this that on august 13th Coach Rodney said it. Black squad winning. And we know he doesn't uh, stack his team guys because he lost last year. No. Um, no. Listen, whatever. Shut up. I'm just saying. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with me saying that it's 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 a good, pure, wholesome, not heavy stack on one side kind of thing. That's right. Uh, uh, Daniel, anything new coming up for you guys? Anything that's going with Varsity Breakdown? Uh, we're just going to be uh, teaming up with Epic Sports Network on Thursday nights. Uh, me and Loopy will be uh, running the field cams uh, for uh, James and Ed. Um, it, you can tune in on CW7 uh, to uh, check out those games. And then Friday nights, of course, we're going to be broadcasting our own games. Uh, we're going to be uh, releasing that uh, here in the next few days as far as where we'll be attending. I can tell you the first game will be out at Santan Foothills against uh, Dysart. So uh, after that, just kind of keep a lookout for us on Fridays. And then uh, one of the things um, that uh, Chris and I are trying to introduce uh, for uh, this year is we're going to be doing a Tuesday top 10 for some of the top plays going on across the state of Arizona. It doesn't have to be in the area that we're covering. It can be uh, anywhere. So if you got that play that you think can crack that top 10, please uh, send us a, uh, through your huddle or however we'll, we'll dissect all that information. And we're going to be closing uh, that deadline on Sunday. So uh, after each week, if you can get us uh, your film in by Sunday, we'll review it. And then Tuesday top 10, it's going to be the newest thing we're introducing this year. And we know you guys should have your film by Sunday because coach should be covering it by Saturday morning. Yeah, you know good. how that goes. And then the other thing else that we're going to try and be pushing out here is the website. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're working on a website right now, guys, trying to get that out, that information, try to kind of hone in everything that we're doing, everything that we're covering and trying to make it a cool atmosphere for you guys to kind of come in and check out and get that information and questions and everything else that you guys want. Um, anything else, guys? Football uh, What's for dinner? That's the next question. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey. there's a lot of um, uh, scrimmages this week. Ooh, Friday scrimmages. Go. Make sure you guys kind of check out. So go go check out a game. Go check out a scrimmage. Go find somebody. A lot of 3A's doing that because they actually kick off next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here we go. Showtime. Good night, guys. Time. All right. <laughs> Other than that, we are going to go ahead and wrap it up because we're done. Y'all have a good one.